what I'd like to do before we uh, before we get into the nuts and bolts of, of what actually is going on uh, within the AD industry is just give a very very brief uh, resume of, of our company and who we are. Um, my name is Colin Steele. I'm the country manager for uh, Exigy Limited, a UK company. We are uh, wholly owned uh, by Exigy AS, uh, a Danish company, and uh, we're very fortunate in that uh, the majority shareholders of our company are really interested in the in the long term, in the, in the long game, uh, from really exploiting uh, anaerobic digestion. Therefore, we were actually in reality disproportionately invested in uh, in research and development. We're extremely lucky that we have uh, that attitude from our board. We're a mature company, we've been around a long time, uh, a long, long time, so we have a lot of expertise. So now we're looking to really uh, squeeze and maximize the opportunities that uh, technology can provide for us uh, and what the market opportunities may be. And that has brought us a uh, project or a technology that we've been developing for some years to commercial status and uh, that's what we're here to do tonight to introduce that to you and uh, I'm going to hand over to my uh, my colleague Jorgen who uh, I'll give you the details and uh, we can discuss afterwards. Thank you. Yes, thank you, very <coughs> thank you very much. I wish we had the same tax in Denmark as in Switzerland. Anyway, um, we call it uh, nitrogen extraction and um, we have a brand name called Poultry Power, and I like that because what that means actually you can get a lot of energy out of chicken, not just what you're eating, but you add, there's probably even more energy in the shit from the chicken. <laughs> um, if we look into the, um, we can say the background is that we experienced in the past that there was a problem with some of these manures. You cannot just simply put it into a biogas plant and it's just working by itself because there are some, some biology and, and some uh, we can say restrictions which I'll come back to later. We then looked into where could there be a potential and this is actually what I should have actually written, manure, poultry manure potential in the UK. There are, in, in the UK, you are actually I don't know if you're eating it, but you're at least producing 17 million broilers a year. And I guess some of that, of course, is exported. And if you take the energy potential of that, that would count for about 100 megawatt electricity. If you take the egg production, you are producing about 1.65 billion eggs per year. And if you take the manure from the egg layers, there's an energy potential of about 10 megawatt electricity in that. And on top of that, you also have the manure from turkeys, docks, etc. So you can see there's actually a lot of energy uh, in the poultry sector. The interesting thing about uh, poultry manure is it has a very high energy potential, but you can only use about 60% of it. So there's a lot of uh, high untapped potential. And an efficient biogas operation poultry manure would require new technology be, be, to be able to handle the nitrogen content. Poultry manure is very high in nitrogen, and nitrogen is, has an inhibiting uh, impact on the anaerobic digestion. So you cannot just do it. So, so I think there's still that. I I, sh I think I switched that off, didn't I, with the timing? Okay. <laughs> Um, so the, the next pre-treatment uh, pre can remove the majority of the nitrogen b before it goes into an anaerobic digestion process. So that means we can actually run a biogas plant with 100% of poultry manure. We are removing minimum 60% of the nitrogen and we're producing a valuable uh, ammonium sulfate. Uh, and you can get up to 25% higher gas yield in some of the poultry manure, more in broiler manure than manure from egg layers. And you are, uh, can, redu uh, or can reduce the risk of spreading diseases because there can be some diseases in the poultry industry. And um, it's not supposed to do that. Um, and then you can also put category two uh, material in, in there. So if we take it a very simple this is a very a simple flow diagram. You have the poultry manure goes into some reception facility. Then you have this next pretreatment, which is like a black box here. You produce ammonium fertilizer, and after it has gone through the next pretreatment, it goes into a dis traditional biogas plant where you can produce biogas, which can be used for for CHP or, or gas to grid. 
then the idea is that because you have a ve very high uh, dry matter in here, then we separate it and you recirculate the liquid. So by recirculating the liquid, you will be able to, to, to deal with 100% pulse manure. You don't need to add a lot of water. <coughs> and I will not go in detail here, but the whole idea is that you, it's a combination of increasing or, or a high temperature and to increase the pH value that will convert the ammonium into free ammonium and, and it's a free ammonium uh, which can be st which we are stripping off in the process and we are doing this by adding lime and a pressure cooking and I think I'll go straight into this here so what we're doing we have a, a tank here where we put take the recirculate from, from the process in here, we're adding the fresh biomass. We leave it in here for uh, about 24 hours, put it into the pressure cooker. When you release, when you release the steam, the free ammonia will go out with the steam into a steam condenser. And in here, you can then uh, add sulfuric acid and then you create ammonium sulfate, which is a valuable fertilizer. It can actually be sold at a very high price. So after this batch cooker, it, it, as it's going into, uh, into, the, um, into the AD plant. So it's, uh, we can say that the next process is a pre-treatment before it goes into the, into, the, uh, uh, into the biogas plant, meaning that we can run now 100% on poultry manure, which is very, it's a very, very valuable in areas where you have a high concentration. In a traditional biogas plant, you may need to add I would say maybe five, six times of other feedstock in order to be able to handle, we can say both the physical, uh, we can say to be able to mix it, but also to be able to control the nitrogen. This here gives a much more, I will not go in detail, but the whole idea here is to convert as much as possible of the nitrogen into what is called free ammonium, because it's a free ammonium which can be stripped off by the next cooker. So the whole idea is to create a loop here where you're recirculating the liquid, putting it back into the process and get more and more of this out of the process. So we don't need to add uh, water. So this means that the, by using the next process, we can monodigest poultry manure without diluting with other substrates. And we can, we have, we can see there's a big potential for that uh, in some, some air, uh, countries around the world. Uh, I'll just show a, 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 few, a few pictures. In Denmark, we have a test facility where we can where we are optimizing. Uh, the whole idea is to get the right mixture of lime and temperature and pressure. And we have experienced that it will it is different for different types of manure. And in order to be able to control it and fine tune the process, uh, it has been, uh, it's necessary for us to be able to control it and be able to monitor it in detail. And what we have done with this facility in Denmark is also that when we're taking this out of this uh, small pressure cooker here, we are putting into some small 200 liter digesters. And what we have done now is we have uh, tested for, uh, for one specific supplier in the UK uh, in eight months now, because you can run a biogas process stable over uh, maybe two or three or four months without problem. But you may realize when you are especially monodigestion that if you run the plant for maybe five, six, seven months, it start being unstable. That's why it's very important for us to be able to make sure that we can control this process because nobody is going to buy this without us giving the guarantees. So that's why we, we feel very confident now in that the, the technology is working on different type of manure. This is the first plant which was built in Denmark about 10 years ago. That plant has been running on different type of, of, uh, of, of solid manure. It, it, has, it was mainly, this process was mainly uh, developed to deal with the high concentration of, of, of pig manure in Denmark, where it took the fiber. But this plant has been running with, with pig manure, it's been running on, on farmyard manure, and it's all been running on different type of, of poultry manure. 
And as you can see, it's been running now for 10 years. And they're actually going to expand the plant very soon. This is a cooker which has been installed in a biogas plant in, uh, in France. But what we may be more interesting here is that now it's a final stage of commissioning the first uh, NICS plant in the UK at Redford actually built for Tamer Energy. And uh, a, there, here you can see the, this is actually, this is actually the, um, with the lime in here. And you can see that there, there, are, there are up here, sorry, two, two pressure cookers. So th there are two lines. Um, and um, this, is, this is a pressure cooker. Um, we can say it is actually a well-proven technology. The, the pressure cooker is the same cooker as a used at a, at a rendering plant. So we can say the actual uh, we can say equipment is well-proven. So the new thing is to run the process. So, so the patent we're having is where we're doing, the, it's a combination of adding lime, pressure cooker, and recirculate, recirculation of liquid. That's re really where we have the patent. Um, so. I thank you very much for your attention.